Hey YouTube Six Shooter, I'm going to uh, go over some information about the journey that I've been on of picking the right concealed uh, handgun carry and some of you all may, may be on, uh, have gone on the same journey or are still on it and uh, so let's just dive right on in. Uh, this, I'm going to show a bunch of pistols, show you the pros and cons, show you what's good, what, you know, what doesn't work and the final result of, of where I ended up in my concealed carry uh, quest to find what works for me. So the first thing is, you know, there's tons of choices out there. There's Glock, there's Beretta, Sig Sauer, Smith & Wesson. I mean, just, just on and on, you know, uh, uh, Springfields and all of them, all these companies, they make fine firearms. It's not like one is that much greater than the other. They're, they're different. And so picking, you know, which one isn't as much as like, you know, hey, I bought this gun. This is why it's the greatest, blah, blah, blah. It, that's, that's, not, that's not how, it, you know, that's how some people go about it, but it's not the right way. The, you know, other things are like, how do you want to carry it? You know, do you want to, you know, inside the waistband holster? You know, do you want a little, uh, a little Uncle Mike's? You know, do you want a little uh, sling pocket carry that can go in the belt or inside? You know, just on and on and on. Shoulder harnesses, you know, whatever it may be. So let's uh, let's 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 just jump in because I think this is the most important thing that I think is uh, when you're trying to pick a concealed, you know, carry handgun. You know, you're looking at caliber, size, you know, the capacity, and lately can you even get the ammunition? So, so if if you're a you know a new shooter or you've you know just started doing it, you know, one of the first things you may get is like a big nine millimeter. This is a Breda 92FS. You may get a Glock. Um, you may get a big Smith and Wesson. And you know, 92FS's Glocks, they're they're you know all over the place. They're the, they're the Chevrolet engine of, of handguns. And you'll go shoot it, and it'll shoot very well, and you'll be accurate with it, and it's great. But you look at that big five-inch barrel. I mean, how can you really fit that? You can't fit that in a pocket. And you certainly, uh, you can put it on an outside waistband, but realistically, for us civilians, no, we're not, not the military people, not the people that, you know, I, I want as many rounds as possible. This is not practical. It's a fine firearm, but it's just not practical. So, the next quest on my journey was, okay, find something that makes sense. So, Pop in, voila, and I've reviewed these before. Um, these, uh, here's a SIG P238. And um, I really like this firearm. It's a wonderful machined, uh, you know, pistol. So I carried this for a while, and I still do. But uh, what is it that I don't like about it? Um, I did a deep in-depth research in carrying cocked and locked and with the you know and the safety's up on it this is a single action only pistol it is cleared um, but when I go to the range and for 1911 owners this is no big deal they're just natural to it but if you pull your firearm for a woman out of your purse for a man from your front from your side from your pocket you've got to remember to bring that safety down and that may not be a big deal and I have practiced this for about two years pulling the thing dropping the dropping the, the the safety down and and you know doing a double tap putting the safety back on putting it back down again just doing that over and over and over again and I believe that in a defensive situation I could but there's also the high likelihood that I may forget and I may just point and shoot and not remember to bring that down so that is um, the size is great it shoots well I have nothing else really bad to say about it except for that is something you have to practice and train for uh, the gun is also fairly pricey you're looking in the 590 to 6 you know 650 range depending on which model that you get so continuing on my quest is 
uh, Walther PPKS. This has got the Pac-Man grips on there. Now this firearm is um, a little different. It's more like the Berettas. Going back to the Beretta, um, there you cannot carry it cocked and locked. You can, but it's dangerous. You just don't do that. So, so what you do is this is a decocker, brings the hammer down, and and in that in this motion, see the trigger does nothing. But you can take it what's called off safety, and your first shot is a double action. So it's like a classic revolver. You pull that back. The hammer comes all the way back. Will come. Will come forward and fire. Now, if you notice right there, that's where the uh, trigger is. But when that first bullet fires, it'll cycle, and now the trigger's way back for a really subtle light, light trigger. So this is called a double action on the first shot, single action on subsequent shots. So this uh, PPK acts the same way. A PPKS. So the trigger's forward, you can cycle the round, the trigger's back, and then it's a very subtle pull. So in a in in a concealed carry, what I like about this this firearm is is I don't leave this down unless I'm traveling. But I will leave this up and if I have to pull it, I can grab it, grab that trigger, the first action the hammer comes back, fires it'll cycle and now you have the, a single action feel for all the follow-ups and that's really good that I like it's not that I don't dislike this but that is that is one extra step I have to do to be able to fire this firearm so once again we're on a journey here so these were these were both are 380s liked them both I've carried them both I've practiced with them both and but be honest with you, in the back of my head, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I I really I prefer a nine millimeter. And and even though I carried this, and even though I think a 380 would definitely uh, be um, you know protect you, I still wanted a nine millimeter. So along came Sig 938. Same issues as with the 238, except it carries, um, you know, the 9 millimeter round. You carry it cocked and locked, put the safety up, and when you're ready to fire, you pull it out. Have to bring that down. So it's the same deal as the 238. I said, I said, okay, well, I'll just, uh, you know, I can live with that. I can do that. I can practice that. I can, you know, that's an automatic feel. I can pull it. And then I left, I left the pistol unloaded and just kind of was you know outside in a safe area and practiced you know just trying to pull it pull it out of my pocket so you know if I put it in a you know like a DeSantis pocket holster for example you know this has got the little flap that just pulls off you know. okay that's fine that'll work it, you know, it'll it'll keep everything. This was not exactly for for this one, but you get the idea. But then, when I was practicing, I noticed myself tugging at this and trying to pull it out and trying to shake it loose. And you know, like I said, I was practicing it, and it it just wasn't practical. I mean, the only time I'd see something like this would work is you know, I'm in a 7-Eleven, I'm in the back buying a Coke. Somebody comes and you know, there's a ruckus up front. They're starting to rob the store, and I can duck down and hide enough to be able to go and and actually you know pull this thing out get it ready to shoot and then kind of peek up and, and take care of myself but to do something quick no no pocket pocket you can't you can't do that fat at least I can't so uh, and that that's with any firearm not just this one so now you're like okay um, what's next what's next on the list uh, one of the things about it is this magazine is six, and they do have an extended for a seven. And you, if you chamber one, so you so you can walk around with it eight total uh, uh, nine millimeter bullets at your disposal. And in reality, that's that's enough to keep somebody off of you. You don't need 
a 15 round magazine for a defensive situation. The first shot or the second shot, I mean, people are going to be ducking and, and running. If you don't believe me, go up and look on, on YouTube and look up like Clerk Shoots Robber. And there's tons of videos up there. And after the first shot goes, everybody scatters. Nobody sits there for a firefight. It's not, this is not, not TV. So then looking at that and thinking that, well, you know, it wouldn't be bad to have a little bit more capacity. In pops in the Ruger SR9C. And the one thing about all of these, these are more higher end firearms. These are not your LCPs. These are not your, you know, bodyguards and things like this. All of these have excellent triggers. This trigger is almost like a Glock. You know, it's very crisp, very deliberate, and it's very accurate. This thing f shoots and feels really nice. Now, one thing I like about this one was you've got two magazines. can carry 17 and carry 10. And so, uh, even though these have shells in them, you can put it like that for defensive carry. And it's, it's, a, it's a good, you know, a good purchase on there. And then if you want to do range or extended, pop that in and you've got a pretty much an SR9 with, with 17 in the, in the, you know, in the magazine. So I'm thinking, okay, great. You know, that solves a capacity issue. This also solves a, uh, you know, this one does have a safety. So yes, I can carry it with a safety, you know, with a safety on or like that and this this will not engage or I can leave the safety off and carry it now this is a lighter trigger but but the uh, you know it's you know you gotta be you know have really good trigger management so on this journey you know now I've got a decent firearm that um, has a higher capacity shoots well shoots accurately but here comes the issue with this gun is it's just th thick. You know, when you compare that up to, you know, the little, you know, 380, it's thicker. Now, that doesn't seem like a whole lot, you know, when you just glance at it. But if you c are carrying it, every millimeter, either in length or in width, makes a difference. And this gun, even though it's supposed to be the compact series, will get heavy and will get uncomfortable, especially in an inside waistband or something on the side of your hip. So once again, I'm I'm st still haven't found what I was looking for. I'm, I'm I'm on my quest. And so here, past few weeks, I have, I believe, I found what I think is the perfect um, concealed carry. At least it is for me. And voila, the car, K9 Elite. This p pistol has a great trigger. Okay, we're cleared. You can pull this thing, and it's smooth. I mean, this is just smooth. There's no gritty. There's no loading. And at the very end, it's just a clean, beautiful break. And I was looking at this, uh, so so it's all stainless steel. And with today's you know polymer wonders that are out there, you're thinking, you know, gosh, why didn't you go with the uh, the polymer version of this? Well, it's it's lighter, and the lighter the gun, the, the it, it's going to give you more recoil. More recoil means less controllability and less to be able to have follow-up shots. So, um, when I looked at, at the at the car the cars that were that were the the polymers, you know, it, they they were a lot lighter, but you know, it just it just didn't feel right. And I, I've I've been definitely started to bend towards almost all steel or all <coughs> excuse me all metal guns. I did uh, take a glance at the they have an MK9, which is a little bit shorter here has a shorter barrel length and a little bit shorter there so it looks more like that you know where my hands are hands are covering it up 
And and after feeling it and, and using it, I said, you know what? I'd rather have something that's a little more fuller size, but still slim. And this this gun is is it looks blocky, but it's not. It's really thin, and it fits in. You know, when I compare this up with a Ruger, you know, it there's there's a, there's a sizable difference. Now, when you put them up like this, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but there's a little bit more of a length. The other thing about about like with this Ruger compared to this is, you know, this is a double stack. Now, one thing you'll see won't see here are Glocks. I have nothing against Glocks. I think they're fantastic firearms. They're everything they say about them is true. They're reliable. They shoot every time. They don't need a break in. But in my opinion. What I like about pistols is is their engineering works of art. When I look at this this car, when I look at this uh, this Walther, they are machined. They look they look nice. They look uh, like craftsmanship has been put into it. And so and so that's that's the key thing that 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 I came up with is you know. I pretty much sold. I sold the LCP. I had two of them. I sold uh, the bodyguard. I sold the 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 Beretta Nano, and I, I I liked them all, and I've done reviews on them. But after time of carrying them, the LCP just was too unwildly. It was too snappy. It is a get off of me firearm you know you stick it in your shirt pocket it's small nothing can snag on it you can pull it out and just bang 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 okay yes it, they all can do that but for for my quest I needed I wanted to find something so you, you would think well this 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 is heavy this is a lot heavier yeah you're not gonna stick that in the front of your cargo pants during the summer and let it flop around it's heavy so what I found for the for me for carrying was this 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 right here works for a lot of these these pistols I can go all the way from the six hour put it in there and I put it on the inside the waistband and then this this right here is it's it protects me and it's a lot more comfortable than a uh, the uncle Mike's it's a lot more comfortable than the um, the, the leather uh, you know, some specific leather, you know, for this. I mean, this thing will even even house the uh, the Beretta. <coughs> it will it will actually work on on a lot of them, different sizes. You know, and I just found that that this right here was extremely comfortable. I don't even I think I got it off eBay. I don't even know who makes it, but but um. So this is where I ended. So I ended up using this holster with this car. Now, well, I still rotate these. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm collecting these. I, I really, I really like them. And you know, gun owners were fickle. We we try something to move to something else and move to something else. But for me, even this the stock rubber grips. I know some people wouldn't would, wouldn't was on there, and that's fine. These make it nice and thin. And, and it just this this firearm feels right. It just feels really good. Little beaver tail back there. Just it just it just mates with me right. This is the first car I've ever owned. So I'm I'm not a you know I've not a, a fan you know a big fanboy or something like that. Uh, I definitely like the elites better than the just the standard <coughs> excuse me uh, standard K9s because the finish is nice and polished. Um, very well made. Uh, the first time I shot it, I, I think I put 300 rounds at the range and not one misfeed, not one problem at all. So, one thing I was, I've been helping a, a bunch of folks out that have been asking me some, you know, some questions and emailing me and, and people locally here in Austin, Texas. And, and one thing I'll say is, is, uh, if if you if you're if you're married you know if you're a guy and you're wanting to get something for your girlfriend or wife um i would honestly i would steer clear of the small polymer 380s uh you'll go to the store they look cute i like that she says that'll fit my purse nice 
Um, you know, it, it may have a laser built onto them like the bodyguards or you can buy for the LCPs. And then you go to the range. And then you go to the range and they shoot it for, uh, you know, two magazines and they say, it hurts my hand, I don't like it. Now, what's its purpose? Its purpose is to be pulled and shot. But, you know, to, for defensive carry to be shot, if you need to shoot it, um, to get somebody away from you, to put, you know, to get, you, get yourself out of harm's way. But the reality of it that comes into it is to be able to do that, you've got to be able to practice with it at the range. And if you take them to the range and they don't like shooting it, then you've just bought a gun that either you're going to throw in your glove box or you're, you're not going to shoot it anymore. I've experienced this with my gal. I, you know, I know a lot of other people that have gone through the same thing. This is not to say that all women are that way. This is, this is not a stereotype. It's pure statistics. It's exactly what I've been seeing. So, like I said, when I went into to buying firearms, I went into it blind. I had no preconceived notions. I was a big duck hunter. The funny thing is, uh, back in uh, what is uh, Hickok 45, he lives about 15 minutes from where I grew up, and I found that interesting. Uh, in Greenbrier, he's up in Jolton, Tennessee, but but you know he he does a pretty good review on a lot of firearms i know he likes glocks a lot and he should they, it, it works for him but you know one thing that he'll say and i'm bouncing around here but you know he does not care for double action to single action he does not like that now i, I happen to like it you know i like it that that that's a long trigger pull so you can't actually hit it or something like that for the first shot because if if I'm defending myself, more than likely that first shot is going to be a little wild because I'm in, I'm in a hurry. You know, I, I don't want to be. I want to be able to aim and pull, but we know what the reality of it is. But after that first shot, the follow-ups are clean. They're really short. You can take the time and aim and, and just, just pip, 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 pip. If you use an LCP or a bodyguard or an LC9, I've owned them all, so I can talk about them you know, through experience, that trigger pull is gritty, it's long, and it's heavy, and and for the untrained civilian who's, you know, just put in some range time, you're going to bounce, you know, and if you want to know how bad that is, put a laser on a pistol, aim it, aim it at a wall about 20 feet away, and just barely move your this, and you'll see, you know, just use a Pythagorean theorem, I mean, for every, you know, every millimeter you drop the nose, you know, it could be a foot 20 feet away off the, on a wall. And and somebody's going to be doing this in a hurry. Yeah, that's that's not a good thing. So the, you know, so the firearm can't save you, but the firearm can certainly help you, depending on what style you've got. So I am a fan of double action to single action. Um, I wasn't a big fan of double action only because of all the guns that I bought, the, the triggers were crap. But with, with the car, the trigger is, is light. It's smooth. With the SR9C, it's not smooth, but it's, it's it, well, it is smooth, but it's crisp. I mean, it's, it's quick. I mean, it's got a little heavier pull, but boom, it fires. This is, has a little bit of a longer, longer throw, but it's, you know, this wide trigger, it's really smooth. So, so on, on your journey, at least what I went with is, is more than likely you're going to buy and sell and buy and sell. And if you live in a state where you've got, you can sell them locally, uh, obviously we're in Texas and you know, you can do anything with firearms here just about is, um, don't have buyer's remorse. All of these firearms here are, are pretty much on the high end. Uh, SR9C, not, not as much. 92 FS, I guess new, they'll run about $600, but you know, you can find them used fairly much. But the SIGs, the Walthers, the cars, if you can even find a car, um, these are all $600 and up firearms. And, and there's a reason why they're that well made. They, uh, compared to a polymer, these are going to take the test of time, you know, for a while. So, um, 
anyway, like I said, you know, th it's not really a review on pistols. It's more of a journey of uh, a, a journeyman's thought process of how I got to this point. And if I could go back in time, I'd say, well, what would I do different? Um, I think what I would do different would be I would rent rent some guns and and figure out exactly what worked and what didn't work. What was th through the rental process, and I, and then I try to do that and ask a lot of questions and watch a ton of YouTube videos and be able to distinguish between somebody that bought a gun or two and says this is why this is the best thing since the slice you know beginning of time sliced bread or you know what process did they use to actually figure out why it works for them now I understand what works for me doesn't necessarily mean work for everybody else some people say you know I'm gonna carry a 45 and that's it some some old timers are like you know what I still carry a J-frame revolver you know that works for them that's fine but it seems today there's a lot there's a big push for um, smaller concealed carries and I'm just giving you a big warning up front is when you go to the range and you go to practice with them they are not fun to shoot three small 380s are not fun the only one I have found that is even remotely comfortable to shoot are these two this 238 and this Walther because they're they're full metal frame guns the Walther even more than this one but but one of the reasons why I end up going with the car is you can't find 380 here at the end of 2013 ammo anywhere. Everybody's bought it up and 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 now nine millimeters back on the tack and I, that's where I wanted to be in the first place. So now yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these. I like these. These are great guns. But you know I will carry the car. I will carry the sig. I will practice with that trigger. But literally this firearm. Is going to be the one that that's, that now dominates my uh, everyday concealed carry, even even though it's full metal, even though it's a little larger, it works for me. If there was a different manufacturer that had the same nice trigger and the, the the weight and the frames of the size, I would have bought it. If it Smith and Wesson had this, I'd be buying it. If it was Ruger, I'd be buying it. So it's not as much as just the name of car. It's it's the it's the the usability and what works for you. So anyway, uh, I don't want to make this video too too long, but it looks like it already is. So hey, I hope this is helpful for some of you guys. Um, it's been it's been fun. It's been a great journey for me, and I will uh, I'll probably do a review on this car at a, at a different time and um, go over some of the things on it. Um, everything about it I like so far, except I'd probably change the sights. I'm not a big fan of the lollipops and. Um, I know they make tritiums for about 80 bucks. I can pop on there. They also make a Crimson Trace um, uh, grip laser that almost looks like exactly like this one. And, uh, you know, for nighttime, either one of those would probably work for what I need to do. So, anyway, I like the single stack. It's thin. It works for me. So, that's it, guys. Hopefully this was um, useful for some of you folks. Take care.